Out of there, guys and gals. On today's episode, we try to resurrect Van Muerte into The Walking Dead, or we'll find out it's just a corpse. So the first order of business, we've got to figure out this thing will actually move under its own power. So it's going to require us removing some things, and like you can see, add some things first on removal and we got to figure out why that transmission leaks so much I feel like it's missing parts so the previous rims and tires on this rig well there's about three different rims and the lug nuts didn't actually fit properly and the tires lost air so the Dodge Whisper scored a nice set of used torque thrust rims unfortunately with some painted lug nuts he splurged and got some new tires So now Van Muerte is rolling nice. Let's figure out why it's not rolling though. Like most of y'all saw on the previous episode, this drive shaft now is straight because it looked like a spaghetti noodle previously. So that's one thing we got to install. Let's go look underneath it. Like discussed in the previous episode, this exhaust system has really seen better days. The real problem seems to be right here at the transmission. Apparently it went and got the pancake effect for that high clearance. So we're gonna cut it off. Hopefully, we can loosen those bolts on the exhaust manifold and cock this pipe out just a little bit. Cause we plan on doing a junkyard exhaust system on this. You know, with that freeway worth of pipe we got off the Prospector project. Another thing y'all may have noticed, this transmission leaks a lot. And it's obviously on the transmission pan. One thing we didn't notice while we were crawling underneath this thing, apparently this transmission pan is missing most of its bolts. So that's good. So, first order of business is cut this exhaust off, remove this transmission pan and see how much death is inside, reseal it, fill it up, run straight pipe, find out if this thing can move a foot under its own power. Oh yeah, we gotta install that drive shaft too. So right at the end. You still did better than me. I would have pretzeled that blade within the first 10 seconds. It was the only good blade we had. <laughs> yeah. We got to get this exhaust off or we're going to lose the shop. Well, in typical fashion, we used an old clapped out saw blade because we never throw away any of the saw blades. And it broke. <laughs> it broke immediately. And we were surprised. So we did the right thing and actually got some new ones. This project might go a little bit better now, or we'll break these. Why didn't we start with new blades? Who would have thought brand new Sawzall blades would actually work better? <laughs> well, why'd we cut it when the pipe just pulls out on its own? <laughs> Can't make the shit up. Well, apparently that exhaust was sealed up real tight. Don't worry, at least one of us is wearing steel toes. Well, after further investigation, there are four bolts holding this whole pan on. I'll be honest with y'all, I don't know if this transmission is going to be any good. I guess we'll find out when we get to look inside. Plus, this pan is bent. Ooh. Well, I mean, at least there was some red to it. Why doesn't it have a filter? Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Look at that death. Um, oh. Oh, no. Okay, so we, we might not be testing the transmission today. Do we have a filter in stock? Mm -hmm. Oh, of course we do. The Dodge Whisper. He has everything. So mm -hmm. Well, guys and gals, 
really don't know what this black tar substance is in the bottom of this thing, but I'm hoping it's not ending up up there because there's no filter on this thing, which is concerning. This is a good indication that Van Muerte might be more of a corpse than The Walking Dead. Ah, redistribution of dead Dodge parts? Wouldn't have it any other way. Got one in stock. Ah, got one in stock. Luckily, in typical Dodge Whisperer fashion, it's got extra parts. We'll be stealing some bolts and, and some filter hardware. See how many bolts you have to pull off this one? Wasn't that other pan so much easier? Well, I'm starting to think that the one in Van Muerte is a race transmission because it's extra light. You know, they, they cut the filter out, three quarters of the bolts, it must have been a drag racer. Oh, so that's what it's supposed to look like. Wow, this one's actually pretty clean. You might as well steal the pan off this one because that one's rusty. And then the one on the van was smashed in. This transmission looks mint. Why don't we just install this? <laughs> the bad part with all this filming, people are going to start thinking you're just a hand and foot model. <laughs> Please. Don't worry, those are OSHA approved foot flops. Now remember, you only need four bolts on this one. Heck, we can reuse that gasket. We'll just slap some pookie on it. Race transmission. Well, after further investigation of this transmission pan, we are of the opinion, since this seems to be solid, apparently a raccoon got in here and took a dump. And that's where it stored everything. Fortunately, even though all this feels soft solid, there seems to be no metal chunks. Hopefully whatever this tar, like, raccoon poop substance is, isn't inside the transmission. No, what is that? Uh-oh. Uh, I can't tell if that is rust right there. Oh, it's stuck to the pan and it's, oh, that is some metal. Yeah. This pan's got a lot of dents in it and a whole lot of evil. This is the kind of violence you don't want in a transmission. Yeah, those are rust pits. This is a whole lot of raccoon evil. The Dodge Whisperer did the right thing and actually is going to install a new filter even though I recommended installing that used filter out of the other transmission. Apparently his standards are higher than mine. Well, got that exhaust scooted over a little bit. Finished up that transmission pan. And the Dodge Whisperer is working on installing the drive shaft. Ah, fresh new parts on flapped out parts. Maybe now with this exhaust moved over, we can just run a straight pipe right through here. A lot better than the crushed pipe that was underneath the transmission. Just to give you all a better perspective, this is the pipe that was under the transmission. As you can tell, it got real skinny, real fast. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that this thing had a hard time breathing. Well, to our surprise, the rear axle actually was full of oil. The only thing on this van that actually had oil in it. And it's clean. Well, because the Dodge Whisperer and I are professionals and we're cheap, we want to run that exhaust at least away from the transmission. So we're going to use these pre-made mint condition exhaust tips from the Prospector project and make some side pipe exhaust. Yeah, this thing's going to sound great. Oh yeah, folks, this is, this is one of our better ideas for sure. Dang, new Sawzall blades work great been reusing them for years. I'm thinking after this we should open an exhaust shop. I agree. I mean, people would pay for this. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is reduce, reuse, recycle. Recycled exhaust systems. I bet you'd make big money in Austin with that. Are, are you positive this is going to be your permanent exhaust system here? I'm not going to argue with you if it is. I'm liking it. Time to make our custom performance exhausts semi-permanent.
It's not pretty. It'll work. Now, I don't know if Bad Tree Production is doing any work on Steel Vanther, but Van Muerte is getting this performance dual exhaust. Yeah, it's going to give all the armadillos to this thing. I don't know if Steel Vanther can compete with that. As far as I know, they haven't done any work to that thing. Are they so confident with their stock exhaust system that they think they can compete with this custom dual exhaust? I don't know. Seems like they need to reevaluate their priorities. Because you would think, if they did any custom exhaust work, wouldn't it make it into a bad tree production episode? Videos or it didn't happen. It almost seems like someone possibly should have turned around and got that camera. Unless they're just scared. I can understand that. Van Huerta is a very intimidating van. As you can tell from the very wet concrete, I went ahead and topped off the radiator. We thought that radiator was empty. It took about a gallon. So that gives us hope that this cooling system actually holds fluid. Uh, this was spilt out. This was definitely not leaking. Well, I was all ready to dump tractor fluid in this thing, but the Dodge Whisperer did the right thing and actually got some automatic transmission fluid. We got that thing semi-topped off. Still trying to figure out that whole electric dipstick on that thing. So he's working his voodoo. Get this thing wired up wrong again, just to see if it bumps off. We're gonna see if uh, we can make this transmission work. All right. Silence that. You ready? Whoa! Oh, that sounds amazing. Oil pressure gauge works too. Oil pressure and the sound of very pissed off armadillos. Oh yeah. Get ready, Steel Panther. Well, the good news is 50 pounds of oil pressure and the alternator is charging. And the Dodge Whisperer went ahead and snuck that thing in gear while holding the brake and it made a movement. Next, I guess we should test this transmission. A little smoky in here though. May need an air freshener. Amongst discovering the newly found oil pressure and alternator charging, we discovered this motor smells like death. Mouse death. We're gonna let this air out a little bit. We might open a few doors on this thing. So upon some Dodge Whisperer diagnosis, since the amp gauge apparently started working, we're now thinking that's not the problem. So we're gonna try to hotwire this to see if we can get some gauges to work. See if this thing overheats, runs at temperature. So we're gonna do some temp connections on this. Maybe some jumper wires just to see if we can get these gauges to turn on. Well, the Dodge Whisperer has done a little finagling on the wiring and we're starting to get some gauges and lights and things that weren't working, working. Found out real quick why the headlights don't work. They're not plugged in. Yeah, who would have thought? So this van is actually in better condition than we thought. Looks like someone just started working on it and then gave up like most previous Dodge owners. Gotta check out the electronic dipstick. So apparently this 727 is very, very thirsty. Which is not surprising considering there's nothing in it. Alright, we're going to try to do some heat cycles on this thing, see if that old thermostat opens up. Are we there? Alright, test drive attempt number one. Alright, we're going to see 
tape and more tape. Max out of the shop. Oh. It's moving. It's moving. Brakes are a little stuck on this, folks. Got it going again. Dang it. See if this thing will warm up. Gotta test that cooling system. All the anger. All the anger. You gotta blow the violence out of it sometimes. about y'all but uh steel vanther better start worrying you might want to start working on that performance exhaust that's right steel vanther you better be ready this thing is running like a sewing machine And we ran out of gas. But the good news is, if we find an antenna, we'll get all the stereo noise out of this thing. There you have it. Van Muerte. Definitely part of the Walking Dead and not just a corpse. All right. God's Whisperer is about to put that hot rod timing in it. So far, the only problem is a power steering leak. Minus four degrees timing, huh? Like a dog. Oh, so you're gonna go ahead and put that hot rod tune in it. Steel Vanther won't know what hit it. So I definitely already know the answer to this, but you know, for the viewers, what are you gonna put this timing at? At least 32 in RPM. Ah, so all the hot rod timing. Yeah, because that, that, that's where I would put it. So I definitely know how to time a Mopar small block. We'll say, getting to the distributor on a van is very user friendly. I seem to remember us putting the distributor back in the way we found it because we assumed the timing was right. I guess we deemed that it, it needed adjusting. Out uh, of gas again. Now if you're wondering why the fuel gauge is on E, we're running off this boat tank because the real tank's sitting back there. 
Yeah, it's on the to-do list. I wonder if that's gonna pass tech. Look, I'm helping. You ready? The Dodge Whisperer found all the armadillos in this bad boy. With all that hot rod tuning, we ran the fuel. So we did the safe thing and went ahead and mounted this marine tank behind the passenger seat. It'd be perfectly good for a test drive. Zip tie mounting. Perfectly safe. Ah, uh, but it's got two points of contact, so. Two points of contact, that's important. Properly adjust the bulkhead connector. Well, I mean, there, there's a lot of problems going on here. There's nothing wrong here. <laughs> nothing to see here. All right, now that we got that hot rod tune in there, let me try another test drive. We're thinking the brakes are dragging pretty bad on this. Test drive number two. Let's see if the uh, hot rod tune makes a difference. Spinning tires now. window doesn't roll all the way down. Yeah, 
Van Muerte, race van. All right, Bad Tree Production. You think Steel Vanther's got a chance? Van Muerte's got all the power now. Still got to do a few things. Brakes, electrical. Probably should fix that fuel tank. Yeah, you know, safety reasons. Probably should fix that fuel tank. Uh, I got to do a power steering box. A little sketchy, and it's leaking. Might need to do a proper exhaust if we're going to ever get it to the track. But for now, I'd say it's a success. Watch out, Steel Vanther. And Muerte's coming for you.